pro wrestling. It's been called a soap opera, but for men. Which is not to say that men can't enjoy traditional soap operas too, it's just an expression. However, what does this phrase actually mean? And if it's true, could it in any way possibly be helpful in improving today's professional wrestling? Well, I say yes, and I also say that it's the topic of this episode. Because today... A major thank you to all of my awesome Patreon supporters such as Edgar Perez, Bob86, and Cool Ass Jack. Thank all of you so much. <laughs> Calling professional wrestling the male soap opera is just a little bit misleading. <laughs> After all, that makes the whole thing sound like it's nothing more than a telenovela, but with lots of fighting. Tony, click and me gusta y suscríbete. Which is not entirely accurate. Uh, just come with me. This very room was used by one Steven Spielberg for his upcoming movie West Side Story, which is a remake of the old 1961 film also called West Side Story, which in turn is a remake of the Broadway musical of the exact same name, which itself is also a reimagining of the Shakespeare play Romeo and Juliet. Now, what do soap operas, musicals, and professional wrestling all have in common? Well, one word. Melodrama. Melodrama is derivative of an old French word, melodrame, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that remotely correctly. Now this word is derivative of two older words. The Greek word melos, and again, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, which means music or song, and also drama, which means drama in Latin, or to be more accurate, a theatrical plot. This is because the origins of the genre date back centuries ago to France, where it originally meant a dramatic piece of music. After that, it migrated to Victorian England, and it started to mean a dramatic word performance that was merely accompanied by music. And after that, it became known as the plays that many of us are familiar with today. As things moved forward, certain dramatic narrative plots became standard fare for the genre. What are these narrative plots? Well, theme number one, the rich versus the poor. An emphasis on class struggles depicting the extremely wealthy and the working class clashing in society. Characters on opposite ends of the financial spectrum go head to head in plenty of melodramatic performances. That's because when it comes to times of societal distress, we tend to look at our entertainment for relief and to relate. Because art imitates life, and life imitates art. It's a great way to express how we as a society are feeling at a time, and we get to look back on it through all the other points of history that we go through moving forward. But emotion is a complicated thing, as we tend to have mixed emotions about a lot of different subjects. So sometimes we go to our entertainment because we want relief, we want escape, we want to live a fantasy life. But at the same time, sometimes we just want something that we can relate to, something that feels tragic because our lives feel that way as well. So are we looking at it for the tragedy or are we looking at it for the fantasy? Well, it's really both, which is exactly why melodrama works just so good. Like with the story Les Miserables, where the main character Jean Valjean is arrested for stealing a loaf of bread in order to feed his sister starving baby. Then after spending some time in prison, he gets out and tries to start a brand new life, only to be relentlessly pursued by a ruthless police inspector that refuses to let him go. Les Miserables started off as a novel, written in 19th century France, the same time period in which the book takes place, and needless to say, France was going through a bit of a rough time at the moment. From there, in 1985, it was turned into a Broadway musical, and this was just a few years after America was going through a rough recession. And from there, it was turned into a full-length feature film in 2012, which was just a few years after the major economic downturn all began in the mid-2000s. Is this a coincidence? Well, I don't think so. Class struggles tend to be a major part of melodrama, often depicting those of very different classes being forced to interact with each other. The conflict between the lavishly wealthy and the working class tends to make for some great storylines, 
Hey, even merely bragging about his bank account on social media turned Seth Rollins, who was a babyface at the time, into a full-blown heel. And the internet aside, social conflict and melodrama can also be paired up for some pretty important reasons too, as it can serve as a great way to make commentary about the society in which we live in. By exaggerating and over-dramatizing plots, you can make some pretty bold claims about the world, and professional wrestling can and should do that exact same thing. Uh, why? Well, um, well, let's get to that second theme I talked about. Theme number two, morality. Many a melodrama challenges ethics with the good versus the bad, right versus the wrong, and many characters having to make heavy choices when it comes to dealing with moral code. Morality is a crucial part of the fabric of the storytelling that is melodrama, as character motivations are an intense part of the program. We love to see characters put in situations where we're wondering what are they going to do next, how will they decide which direction are they going to go in. For example, another trope of the genre is the seductress, a tempting female looking to ensnare someone like, let's say, a married man. Will he succumb to her charms? Does he realize that she's only using him to take over control of his family's diamond mine? Does he know that his own wife is having an affair? No matter how ridiculous the scenario, the moral questions about whether or not something is ethical works to ensnare the audience as they make their own decision about what's right and wrong. And when it comes to professional wrestling, we have a real strong interplay between the good and the bad. We call them faces and heels. And their alignments, their motivations, and the conflict within help to drive the story forward. And the more complex these decisions are, the more interesting it tends to be. Should Dean Ambrose forgive Seth Rollins? Should Steve Austin save Stephanie McMahon, even though she's his worst enemy's daughter? And will the Hart family continue to feud with one another, or will they finally reunite? Oh, but speaking of family, that leads me to... And presenting theme number three, family. For many, a melodrama has centered around a family, as people who are related to each other inherently carry a lot of tension and drama along with them, just by nature. The home, family struggles, these tend to be a common arena for many a melodrama. As Dominic Toretto would say, it's all about family. The Ewings, the Covingtons, the McMahons? Many a melodrama has revolved around that of a single family, as the dynamics of people who are related to each other just naturally tend to add a lot of drama. And in addition, it also works to add to the previous two themes that we talked about, as most of us tend to get our morals, our values, from our family. And also, issues within the home can be reflective of problems going on within society, just, you know, in a microcosm. I mean, why else do you think that whole head of the table storyline is so popular right now? Furthermore, the family unit is also an easy basis for an ensemble cast, another staple of the genre. Not only does it work to introduce a group of main characters, but also any associates that they have can easily now be brought in to be part of the greater group. And when it comes to pro wrestling, it has always been an ensemble cast. But trying to manage the juggling act of balancing all these different talents properly is really not easy to do which is all the more reason why mastering this technique done by melodrama would definitely benefit pro wrestling. Now, in case you were wondering, good versus bad, rich people and working people, and a large ensemble cast of characters who are related to each other, couldn't this be any kind of story? Well, yes. If you are thinking that, you are absolutely correct, because these techniques are just so good at creating drama, it's no wonder why so many different types of shows are beginning to use it, and not just soap operas. For instance, do you like Smallville, a superhero origin show that just happens to contain tons of soap opera elements? It centers around the Kent family, the struggle between them and the wealthy Luthors, and is built upon a foundation of good versus bad. Plus, it also has a lot of relationship stuff in it too. Face it, Smallville is a soap opera. Or how about Cobra Kai? Cause I got news for you, that's got a lot of melodramatic stuff in it too. It's another morality play, but this time it's featuring the LaRusso family and an ensemble cast that is also separated into the rich and the not so much. Or how about the movie Captain America Civil War? We get all caught up on the moral question of whether or not a fictional superhero should sign a fictional piece of legislation on registering with the Sokovia Accords. It's everywhere, and one of the reasons why the traditional soap opera as we know it, meaning the shows that were originally sponsored by soap companies, are drying up is because we've learned to incorporate melodramatics into so many other forms of entertainment. 
thus giving us our fix. So, while traditional soap operas are disappearing on local daytime TV, their influence definitely lives on. Binge-worthy shows, episodic television, soap operas were doing all that long before streaming services were ever a thing. There is just something oddly addictive about melodrama, which works to ensnare some pretty unlikely viewers at times. Babe. What? Babe. Babe, I'm trying there's, to do something. No, I got it. There's this show. It's the best show ever. It's okay. called Jane the Virgin. Oh, okay, that, that's great, but I'm in the middle of trying to do something. No, can you watch with me, please? It's so good. Like, Jane is in love with Michael and everything. Oh, what are you watching? Are you watching Jane the Virgin? Yes! I love this show! Oh my god, it's so good! You gotta watch this. You gotta watch you it. You gotta watch it. You too? Never gonna answer this. Ugh. Me, I don't mind you that Michael cut the feet. He cut my tail. Cut the That's feet. That's because Raphael got on fire. Are you crazy? He's on fire. Oh, are we forgetting that he faked the fire because oh. Michael is a liar. He's not a liar. Pro wrestling itself is at its best when it follows these same rules. Austin McMahon, the mega powers exploding, these were all plots that we couldn't get enough of and just wanted to see more. Once you accept all of the over the top mannerisms, You can allow yourself to get invested in the lives of the characters because it's their decisions and it's the emotions that hook you. And while yes, it does sometimes lack subtlety, nuance, and realism, but it's the loudness that allows them to make their statements just so clear. And when it comes to pro wrestling, we need it to make grand statements too. We need high emotional stakes, speaking about class struggles within society. We also need hyper fictionalized scenarios, all asking complex moral questions. And we need this to happen around an ensemble cast of eccentric characters. This is what must happen. This is what should happen. This is the only thing that could save professional wrestling. Even if I am being just a little melodramatic. Well, there you go, how professional wrestling can benefit from melodrama. But what are your thoughts on the subject? Let me know down in the comments section, and please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave knows.